this is the second video we devote to Shotkey diode detectors. Uh, this time we will measure commercially available devices and compare the results with the basic model we presented in the previous video. We have several Shotkey diode detectors in our lab. Uh, here we can see two samples of three different models. The Christec detector works at frequencies up to 4 GHz and they are qualified to detect powers between minus 10 and 30 dBm. 30 dBm is just one watt of power. This is quite high for a radio frequency signal. Therefore, these devices are optimized for high power applications. They are fairly affordable with a cost of around 30 euros. Hiblet Packard devices are quite old. Uh, they are in our labs since more than 20 years. But either these or other models very similar to these ones are still commercially available. They are specified to detect power from minus 30 dBm, this is 1 microwatt, and 20 dBm at frequencies up to 18 GHz. They are significantly more expensive than Christec detectors. We will test the devices with a simple setup shown here, where the input power will be provided by a mini circuits uh, sweep generator. This instrument can generate powers as high as 20 dBm at frequencies up to 4 GHz. We have chosen a frequency of 1 GHz for these tests. Uh, the DC voltage measurements will be made with a fluke uh, 45 multimeter. This multimeter will provide us stable uh, readings of voltages as low as a uh, few tens of microvolts. It is important to make sure that the detectors are properly matched. This table shows the impedances we measured at 1 GHz with a vector network analyzer. We can observe that all devices are very well matched, therefore we will ignore the power losses due to reflections. These measurements were made for a nominal output power of 10 dBm. We know that uh, these detectors are non-linear devices, and therefore it is convenient to check what happens at lower powers. We did it. We did a few tests uh, doing the calibration at powers of uh, minus 20 dBm and observed in all cases very small variations of the input impedances. Let us remember the equation we obtained in the previous video to predict the output voltages to be measured with a Schottky diode detector. We should expect a square lab response at low input powers, where in principle we have a dependency of the output voltage with respect to a factor that we called K. This factor is the product of the device differential conductance and the load resistance. The combination of an ideal detector with a perfect multimeter should remove uh, this dependency. Let us assume that we can do this for simplicity and see what happens. This is the output voltage we measured with the Christec diodes. The manufacturer provides measurements for input powers between minus 10 dBm and 10 dBm, which are in good agreement with our measurements. In addition, we can observe that the repeatability of the results is excellent. Both diodes provide uh, nearly the same voltages. Let us compare these measurements with the theory. Oof, it could be better. The discrepancies are really strong. It is not only the fact uh, that the numbers uh, differ a lot. We can also observe that the device does not show the uh, square law response we expected at low input powers. Well, let's try with the other detectors. Look, this is much better. We don't have a perfect fit, but at least the measurements behave as they should and are not too far from the ideal response. And yes, you guessed it, the last one is the best one. Here it is, HP8472B. This device uh, shows an almost perfect behavior at the lowest input powers. We can observe that uh, the HP devices exhibit a slight lack of repetibility between two nominally identical devices. Unfortunately, we don't have enough information to clarify where this lack of repetibility comes from, but uh, we can clarify an important point. It cannot come from the measurement system. The reason is that we have obtained an almost perfect repetibility with the Christec devices. 
and we have used the same measurement system with all devices. In addition, the measured powers and voltages are all in the same range. Anyway, these detectors are very nice. We used a conventional multimeter, but we could uh, detect powers of almost minus 50 dBm. This is 20 dB below the minimum power specified by the manufacturer. Now it is time to see if the K factor of our model is able to produce a better agreement between simulation and measurements, but uh, we shouldn't accept any value of K. Since we are using commercial detectors, we cannot know accurately what are the values of factors like the reverse saturation current or the diode conductance. Furthermore, the fit with our K factor could also correct other errors that have a completely different nature. It is for this reason that we must check which values should be acceptable for K. Let us see the typical numbers. We know that the ideality factor should be between 1 and 0.1, and the reverse saturation current uh, should be something between 1 and 10 nanoamperes. This is the current that corresponds uh, to the low barrier circuit diodes that are used in the HP detectors. We also know the multimeter resistance and the thermal voltage with a reasonable accuracy. So we compute a range of possible values for K and obtain that this factor should be something between 0.3 and 3. Now let us try these margins. Here you can see two simulations with K factors that are close to the numbers we were expecting. The values of K are therefore reasonable, so we can conclude that this fit is not just a pure mathematical fit. It is physically acceptable for the HP devices, but the model is not valid for any Schottky diode. The Christek detectors are clearly not square low devices. We must be honest, we cannot determine what is the reason. We have no knowledge on the internal structure of these devices, but this shouldn't bother us too much. Christek devices were optimized for high power applications so they don't need to present a square low response. We have shown that Schottky diodes allow us to detect signals with inexpensive voltimeters, but they also have other interesting applications. We will talk about them in our next video.